Toro, Secretary of the Navy, General David Berger, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps, and Admiral Michael Gilbey, United States Navy, Chief of Naval Operations. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Lloyd James Austin III, Secretary of Defense, accompanied by Vice Admiral Sean S. Buck, United States Navy, Superintendent of the United States Naval Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, the Blue Angels, the Navy's Precision Flight Demonstration Squadron, will be approaching momentarily behind me at the south end of the stadium in a salute to the class of 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite all of our guests to remain standing for our national anthem sung by Midshipman First Class Annabelle Powers and the invocation by Captain Maurice Buford, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy.
Let us pray. Most triumphant and loving God, it was as if four years ago these warriors responded to that divine question, whom shall I send and who shall go for us? While others ran away from this call to protect this country from all enemies, foreign and domestic, they boldly came from the four corners of the globe to refine their vocation at the Naval Academy. While here, you use a world-class staff to challenge these warriors to think more critically, to act more decisively, and to always serve with more clarity, especially in the fog of war. While here, you, they were pushed be beyond their limitations. Their assumptions were challenged, and they were reminded of the war-fighting reality that everything rises and falls on leadership. So as we engage upon today's ceremony, Help these warriors to always cherish their friendships, for they will be the difference maker in the future. Help these warriors to forever pour into their families, for truly without them, they could not be who they are and where they are. But most of all, help these emerging leaders of tomorrow to always keep you first in all they say and do, for truly all things are possible to those who dare to believe. And God, we believe that the best is yet to come. Now receive all of your glory, your power, and your honor forever. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the 63rd Superintendent of the United States Naval Academy, Vice Admiral Sean S. Buck. Secretary Austin, Secretary Del Toro, General Berger, Admiral Gilday, welcome. Good morning, family and friends, and most importantly, the class of 2023. Let me be the first to congratulate you. Today is your day. I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be here looking out at all of you all and your loved ones here in the Navy and Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. So much work has been done behind the scenes to make Commissioning Week run as smoothly as possible, as safely as possible, and to set up this beautiful ceremony today. I'd like to take a brief moment to thank our dedicated faculty and staff the Naval Academy Athletic Association, the United States Flight Demonstration Team, the Blue Angels, the class of 1973, this year's Link in the Chain class, our Chaplain Corps, and our very own Naval Academy Band for putting together a fabulous ceremony this year for our graduates. How about a big round of applause for all those folks? To the mothers and fathers and the brothers and the sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents, sponsors, 
and all our friends here today, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, Joanne and I, thank you, say thank you for your unwavering and continuing and everlasting support of the young men and women that are here on the field today. Without you all, they may not have been, to na been able to navigate as well as they did over these last four years. And as we all know, the class of 2023 navigated a global pandemic during the heart of their Naval Academy journey. And while I'm very proud of their resilience that they demonstrated during the darkest hours of that journey, I'm most proud of the leadership that they demonstrated leading the brigade of midshipmen out of the pandemic. Over this past year, the class of 2023 reinstilled a sense of unity, accountability, and esprit de corps amongst their fellow midshipmen that had been fragmented during the toughest periods of the pandemic. 23, I will be forever grateful for your grit, your professionalism, and your optimism that helped the entire brigade navigate our way out of the pandemic. 23, your journey at the Naval Academy in many ways mirrors the class of 1923, who had the responsibility of reinvigorating many customs and traditions and the spirit on the yard after the demands of the First World War and the Spanish flu. In fact, one of the most prominent members of the class of 2023 did not even graduate high school prior to matriculating to the Naval Academy due to the impact of the Spanish flu. But years later, Admiral Arlie Burke, Naval Academy class of 2023, would go on to distinguish himself as a steadfast commander during World War II and the Korean War, and ultimately become the 15th Chief of Naval Operations. 23, I'd like to pass on some words of wisdom from a piece that Admiral Burke penned for the Proceedings Magazine in 1975. He wrote, and I quote, great leaders have much in common. Each of them had a goal, an objective that they wanted to achieve. Usually, Navy leaders aspired to win honor and success for their country. Each of them worked hard to achieve a high degree of professionalism. Each tried to become the best Naval officer among his peers. Each learned thoroughly all elements of their profession. They knew the capability and limitations of the equipment they used, not superficially, but thoroughly. They learned how to communicate with their fellow men and to inspire their associates with the zeal and enthusiasm that they themselves possessed. They realized that not only must they be highly skilled professionals, but so must all under their command. 23, these past four years have solidified your foundation and given you the requisite tools that you'll need to become a great naval leader. But as Admiral Burke alludes to, there is still much work to be done. When you get to the fleet, keep his words in mind. Set goals, learn your profession, communicate, inspire, and strive always to be the best version of yourself. Like every class that's come before you during your time in Annapolis, your gaze has been necessarily focused on the horizon and the challenges to come. By design, your four years by the Bay are spent in constant preparation for what comes next as officers in the fleet and the great adventures that awaits each and every one of you. Within this hour, each of you will raise your right hand and take an oath to defend our Constitution. That action and promise will bind you to every Naval Academy graduate that has come before you and every graduate that will follow. Take your oath today with the knowledge that you have a strong foundation upon which to continue your journey as Navy and Marine Corps officers. And also know in, that the Yard, the faculty, the staff, and the coaches who have dedicated their life's work to our mission and this community of alumni that you're joining today will forever 
remain your home, ready to welcome you back to our shores from wherever you may roam. Your nation is counting on you, Class of 2023. Your Naval Academy family is very proud of you. We look forward to what each and every one of you may accomplish. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my pleasure and honor to introduce the Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Carlos Del Toro. Good morning, everyone. What a great day. Before I begin my, uh, my statement here, let me thank the Chaps. It's good to see that he still has good connections upstairs. Thank you, Chaplain, for beautiful weather today. It is wonderful to be here with you to celebrate this momentous occasion for our soon-to-be graduates and their families. First of all, I want to thank a few individuals who have joined us here this morning. Secretary Austin, I am grateful that you agreed to join us here in Annapolis to see exactly what you missed during your time at West Point, sir. <laughs> now, as the Secretary knows, I've always been very loyal to him in every possible way, but when I was first confirmed by him, which was a deep honor for me, I promised him that I would be faithful and true to him 364 days out of the year. Something tells me that the nightlife of the Hudson Valley didn't compare to that of downtown Annapolis. But, but in all seriousness, sir, we are very proud and honored of the over 1,000 new ensigns and second lieutenants that you see here before you who will soon be under your charge as you lead our Department of Defense. We have no doubt in all the confidence that you will find these officers ready and eager to address the challenges that lay ahead for our nation. Admiral Gilday, General Berger, I know today is bittersweet for both of you as you commission your last class from Annapolis before retiring. For almost 80 years of combined service, you have stood the watch, leading sailors and Marines at every level of command around the globe. I personally have appreciated your counsel during my tenure, and even more than that, your partnership. As you head off on your next journey, Please know that the Navy and the Marine Corps that you leave behind are stronger thanks to you, and that includes these young officers who will carry forward your legacy of service. Now, to the parents and families of the graduating class, whether you are in this stadium, attending virtually, or just with us in spirit, Thank you for supporting these men and women throughout their academy journey. I remember as if it were yesterday the pride of my parents' faces when I graduated from this institution as a member of the great class of 1983. I will always be grateful to them for the risk that they took in coming to this country as Cuban refugees in 1961 and for how hard they worked throughout my childhood to give me the best upbringing and education that they possibly could. So, I am well aware of the sacrifices that each and every one of you have made for your midshipmen throughout the years. They would not be who they are today without your love and your support. Thank you for everything that you have done to raise these amazing young people. And allow me to say, you've done an outstanding job how about a hand of applause for your parents and your families? And now I want to address our soon-to-be ensigns and second lieutenants. Forty years ago, just yesterday, though they passed in the blink of an eye, Vice Admiral Buck and I were sitting right here where you are today, listening to then the 65th Secretary of the Navy, John Lehman, 
talking to us about the challenges that we would soon face. At the time, the United States Navy and the Marine Corps were focused on maintaining an easy peace around the globe, ensuring the freedoms of the seas in the face of the enduring threat that was posed by the Soviet Union. Today, you, your sailors, your Marines, will face challenges in every domain that you operate in, from the seabed to the stars, as well as in cyberspace. Nations like Iran and North Korea are destabilizing forces in their respective regions, while Russia continues its unprovoked and illegal invasion of Ukraine, violating their territorial and national sovereignty. In the Indo-Pacific, we are observing the rapid buildup of the People's Republic of China's Navy as they look to intimidate and coerce their regional neighbors to gain acceptance of their excessive maritime claims. It is clear that these nations are trying to upend the rules-based international order that, since World War II, has brought peace, stability, and economic opportunity to billions of people around the globe. You will face great challenges, and you will do so in a rapidly changing environment. I can think of no greater responsibility and no greater honor than to be entrusted with leading our sailors and our Marines. You will be asked to make hard decisions, decisions that will have real impacts on the lives of those under your charge. But make no mistake, you are ready for what lies ahead. The lessons that you learned in Loose Hall and throughout the yard will serve you well, providing a foundation from which to act with honor and integrity when those situations arise. Strong moral leadership will be required of each of you as you strengthen your own teams whether it be your division underway on board a ship or your platoon deployed to a far off land. By doing what you know is right, by leading by example, you will succeed and your teams will succeed. Remember what you have learned here. Remember our core values and always, always treat each member of your team with dignity and respect. Now, I cannot tell you what the future exactly holds for you in your naval careers. In 1983, I could never have predicted that I would be the first commanding officer of the USS Bulkley, the G84, let alone the 78th Secretary of the Navy. Nor would I have ever guessed that I would be sharing this stage with my classmate, your superintendent, as we welcome you into our ranks. Vice Admiral Buck, thank you. Thank you and Joanne and for your service to our nation. For decades, you have served as a Navy family supporting not only each other, but our sailors at every level from the squadron to Fourth Fleet and now to the Naval Academy. What you have done for the Navy, Marine Corps, and our nation as you shape these future leaders of our Naval services simply cannot be overstated. And it has been a true honor to serve alongside you once again. These new officers before us this morning are prepared to lead thanks to your efforts. As I close my remarks, I will leave you all with this final thought. Every day you spend as commissioned officers, remember that our nation needs you to live up to the oath that you take here today before your families and your friends to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, not for self, but for country. These words are now engraved on your hearts, just as they were for every generation of graduates before you and as they will be for all those who follow in your footsteps. With that, my heartfelt congratulations to the class of 2023. It is an honor to welcome you into our fleet and our force. May God bless each and every one of you, your sailors, your Marines, and your families. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct honor to introduce the 28th Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Lloyd James Austin III. Well, good morning, class of 2023. I don't think there's anybody out there, Sean. <laughs> Good morning, class of 2023. Good morning, sir. Right. 
Secretary Del Toro, Admiral Gilday, General Berger, thanks for your leadership of our Navy and our Marine Corps. And it's great to see so many distinguished guests uh, and, and local leaders, as well as members of Congress here today. Thanks for your support of this great academy. Vice Admiral Buck, family, friends, and above all, graduates, I am absolutely delighted to join you on this proud day. It is great to be here. Even though the first guy that I met said, beat, beat Army. <laughs> and it is indeed an honor to help welcome the next generation of sailors, Marines, to what is beyond any doubt the finest Navy that the world has ever known. Now you're going to need to get used to some new titles. So congratulations, ensigns and second lieutenants. Huh! You know, I really appreciate the warm welcome today, especially for an old West Point guy like me. And as a former Service Academy cadet, it's a real pleasure to take care of this next piece of important business. And so in keeping with long-standing tradition, to all midshipmen serving restrictions for minor infractions, you are hereby absolved. You know, I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> you know, the United States Navy has been doing some pretty amazing things lately. Pushing the limits with cutting edge platforms, schooling the next generation, and confronting new dangers. And that was just the first half hour of Top Gun Maverick. As I look around this stadium, I see some very proud families and loved ones out there. You've been on this journey right alongside your midshipmen, from my day to plebe summer, to signing those two for seven pledges. Your love and encouragement has given them the strength to keep going. So graduates today belongs to your loved ones too and let's give them a third round of applause. Let me offer a special word of thanks to the sponsor families. They open up their homes, to exhausted mids, offering hot meals and laundry and a place to crash that isn't Mother B. So thanks to all of you for what you have done and what you continue to do in support of these great men and women. And Vice Admiral Buck has also got a graduation of sorts coming up. Soup, you've led this brigade through incredibly challenging times. And I want to thank you for your many years of service. And as your retirement beckons, we wish you fair winds and following seas. Now, graduates, 
I know that you're feeling some powerful emotions today. Pride, gratitude, relief, and maybe a bit of shock. And if you're anything like my own academy class back in the day, you may be worrying about what's next. And you may wonder whether you're truly prepared to leave. Ensigns and lieutenants, let me be clear. You are ready. And that's not just because you'll have a commission the next time you walk off the yard. It's because of each and every time that you walked onto the yard. You chose to come to this academy. And despite challenges that nobody imagined, you chose to keep coming back and to keep pushing and to keep growing. And you know, all those choices add up to character. And all those decisions add up to integrity. And all those deeds add up to leadership. And the way that you overcame obstacles at this academy will show you how to conquer challenges outside of this academy. You led the brigade with grace and compassion after the academy family tragically lost two midshipmen last year. And I ask that we take a moment to remember midshipman Taylor Connors and midshipman Luke Berg. Some of you have been hit with unexpected challenges. Maya Weiss learned last year that she was facing a battle with Hodgkin's lymphoma. But last November, she rang the bell at Walter Reed, done with chemo and cancer-free. And Maya, your classmates can't wait for you to join them in the fleet later this year. This class also led throughout a global pandemic. And COVID-19 disrupted your plebe year. It delayed rituals like climbing Herndon. It separated you from your classmates as you were just starting to feel like a family but you hung in there. You took care of each other. You found ways to adapt, like firing up grills on the yard for Thanksgiving dinner, or doing squats with jugs of water in your parents' backyard when sea trials became e-trials. And when it was finally safe to gather again, you reunited with your classmates and you made good use of that weekday liberty at O'Brien's. Now the Naval Academy's new midshipman ethos records the core values that you've sworn to live by. You seek wisdom. You practice discipline. You treat others with dignity and respect. And you will defend our democracy with honor, courage, and commitment. You know, those values aren't just words that you recite. Those values are who you are. And that's how I know that you are ready for the challenges ahead. As one of your predecessors once said, we must adjust to changing times and still hold on to unchanging principles. And that was President Jimmy Carter, class of 1947.
And I'm, I am proud that one of this school's most distinguished alumni, a man of deep faith and a champion of human rights, is now honored on the yard with the naming of Carter Hall. <laughs> Graduates, over the years, I've learned that leadership is not just what you do, it's who you are. And over the years, I've had the privilege of working with some outstanding graduates of this academy. People like Carlos Del Toro, who came to America, as you heard this morning, as a refugee from Cuba. And he went on to command a destroyer and serve as your 78th, Navy, uh, 78th Secretary of the Navy. And his American journey reminds us how much is possible in this exceptional country. I'm also thinking of Michelle Howard, the Navy's first female four-star and the first African-American woman to command a combatant ship. And after she retired, Admiral Howard led the important commission to rename military assets after great American patriots who represent the very best of our history. And her career is an inspiration to anyone facing a tough, a tough task. Some days, she says, you just got to get your warrior on and take that first step. I'm also thinking of my junior military assistant, Lieutenant Colonel Jay Armas, class of 2001. Now, this outstanding Marine is with me every day, morning until night. And every morning, when Colonel Armas briefs me on my schedule, he realizes that all those chow calls were actually good for something. Finally, I'm thinking of my former boss, Admiral Mike Mullen, who was the 17th Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He taught me some of the most important lessons of my career. And the first one was don't ever work for a Naval Academy graduate when Navy football is in the middle of a 14-year winning streak. Admiral Mullen also taught me that a leader's single most important job is to build and empower a great team, and to encourage debate of diversity of views, and to take care of all of your people. And if it hadn't been for Admiral Mike Mullen, I probably wouldn't be here with you today. You know, Naval officers have a special understanding of the power of teamwork. To keep a ship afloat or a submarine diving, the crew has to work together as one team, from the captain to the cooks. And that's the spirit that makes American sea power so formidable. And we need that spirit for the crucial mission that you're all here to shoulder. America's sea power lets us sail and fly and operate alongside our unrivaled network of allies and partners from the South China Sea to the Gulf of Aden to the Caribbean. It lets us project power around the world. And it helps us secure the sea lanes for the free movement of people and goods and ideas. Today, our Marines are showing the power of teamwork as they train alongside our allies in, in Japan and the Philippines to strengthen deterrence in the Indo-Pacific. Our Navy is driving forward our historic AUKUS partnership with Australia and the UK, bringing together three great democracies to keep the Indo-Pacific free and open and prosperous. 
And in Europe, our sailors are operating shoulder to shoulder with our NATO allies. And the Navy has helped expand Ukraine's maritime capabilities as Ukraine fights against Russia's cruel and reckless war of choice. So around the world, the Navy and Marine Corps bring relief to disaster zones. They counter piracy and drug trafficking. And they defend the, the freedom of the seas and skies and space. And that's what American sea power lets us do. Ensigns and second lieutenants, that is your mission. And your leadership will be at the very heart of America's work to forge a more open and more peaceful 21st century. And you know, our competitors op openly challenge that vision. They want to replace the hard-won post-war system of rules and rights with a lawless world of autocracy and aggression. But the American flag atop a U.S. Navy ship has long been the symbol of hope for a more free and secure world. So graduates, you will deploy forward. You will travel the globe to defend our democracy. And you will learn that the lifeblood of the rules-based international order is actually seawater. That's a big job, but you're up to it. You know, exactly 30 years ago today, in the class of 1983, heard from a wise and scrappy member of the Naval Academy's class of 1958. Senator John McCain held true to his values under impossible circumstances. And to the graduates sitting where you are, he said, quote, you have been taught much of what is necessary to lead other men and women in war and peace. You will learn much more from your approaching experiences. As ensigns and second lieutenants, the character of the young sailors and Marines entrusted to your care will be formed in large part by their appreciation of your character. And then Senator McCain added, you are where leadership begins. So ladies and gentlemen, look around you. This stadium reminds us of the great battles in which those who came before you fought to defend democracy. Bella Wood, Guadalcanal, Iwo Jima, Inchon. But what you don't see here is all the battles that never occurred and all the wars that never erupted because American sailors and Marines showed up. They deterred conflict, they kept the watch, and they reminded the world of what America stands for. President Theodore Roosevelt once said, a Navy, a good Navy, is not a provocation to war. It is the surest guarantee of peace. In class of 2023, wherever your career takes you, remind the world of what you stand for and what America stands for. Honor, courage, and commitment democracy, liberty, and the rule of law. And the lessons of this academy will always steer you true. And when the fog rolls in, let the values that you have learned here be your lighthouse. Because your commanders will call on you. 
your teammates will look to you and your country will count on you. And I know that you are ready because you are where leadership begins. In class of 2023, I am absolutely honored to call you my teammates and shipmates. And we will be cheering you on as you make our country stronger in our democracy deeper and our world safer. Congratulations, may God bless you, may God bless your families, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. The Academic Dean and Provost of the United States Naval Academy, Dr. Andrew T. Phillips. Successfully completing the requirements and demands of a Naval Academy education is no small task. From I-Day to today, it's a steady dose of challenges ranging from academic to athletic to leadership and character development. I have no doubt that each of you has been challenged, perhaps in ways you never thought you would, or to lever levels that you never thought you could achieve. But you did, and we congratulate each of you for doing so. To the families and friends of these soon-to-be Naval Academy graduates and officers, these soon-to-be ensigns and second lieutenants, and to the faculty and staff here today as well, I would like to thank you and congratulate you as well. The rare graduate is the one who never needed the support of family and friends and faculty mentors. These graduates, like the tens of thousands before them, have depended on your support and encouragement, and you were there for them when they needed it the most. I know you are proud of their success, and we are most grateful to you for your role in that success. Candidates, please rise. Admiral Buck, on behalf of the faculty of the United States Naval Academy, I present these candidates for the baccalaureate degree and recommend that this degree be conferred upon them. As you have successfully completed your course of study at our United States Naval Academy and have been recommended by the academic board, as Superintendent of the United States Naval Academy, and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Congress of the United States, I confer upon each of you the baccalaureate degree with all rights and privileges thereunto pertaining. Please be seated. The Commandant of the Marine Corps, General David Berger, United States Marine Corps, will administer the oath of office to those be commissioned in the United States Marine Corps. General Berger, I present today 258 midshipmen of the graduating class to be commissioned in the United States Marine Corps. Today, please be seated. Today's a great day to be a Marine. For centuries, before we had a flag, before we had a constitution to defend, young men and women like yourselves answered the call. Like you, they were called to serve. And like you, they were called to fight. From the Battle of Midway, look around you one more time, Chosin, Quezon, the streets of Fallujah, America's sailors and Marines fought for our nation. They fought for values like honor, courage, and commitment. But above all, above all, 
They fought for each other. In a minute, you will take an oath, join that same illustrious line of warriors, and in that moment, you will share their legacy. One that from this day forward is yours to protect. You should be proud of what you have accomplished. To stand here today, these four years, no doubt, have challenged you in ways that you never expected. But do not rest, because your sailors and Marines will not. They will challenge you, they will inspire you, and they will demand the best of you every single day. Being a good leader doesn't mean you have to make every perfect decision, or that you'll never come up short. Leadership, officership, is giving your Marines everything that you've got every day, and knowing that they will give theirs in return. You must know them. You must guide them. Drive them forward. You must count on them because they will count on you. It's not good enough to get there fast. It's not good enough to show up first. It's not good enough just to be ready to fight. You must win every time, without exception. Because in combat, there are no alibis. There are no second chances. Personal conviction, courage, integrity, the commitment to serve your country and the men and women on your left and right. These are the traits that set you apart. And that is how I know you are ready. Many are called to serve, few answer, and even fewer become Marines. Welcome to the team, Semper Fidelis. Graduates to be commissioned in the United States Marine Corps, rise. Raise your right hand. Having been appointed a second lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps to rank as such from the 26th of May, 2023. Do you hereby accept such appointment? And do you solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same? That you take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion? And that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you are about to enter, so help you God. Aye. Second Lieutenant, seats. The Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Michael Gilday, United States Navy, will administer the oath of office to those being commissioned in the United States Navy. Admiral Gilday, I present 744 midshipmen of the graduating class to be commissioned in the United States Navy. This is a great moment for the United States Navy. Today, we have 100 ships at sea, and those ships are forward. From the South China Sea, to the Indian Ocean, to the Arabian Gulf, to the Mediterranean Sea, to the Caribbean, and to the high north and the Arctic. Now, I know that, that, that there's not a parent out there today who's ever received a call from the member of the class of 2023 saying, hey, mom, hey, dad, 
Just calling to tell you it's been another easy day in Annapolis. <laughs> Folks, we don't do easy at this institution. We don't because we hire every single one of our graduates. As I think about this class and what they're about to do, I just want to offer three points, because I think in order to lead, one has to first master him or herself. The United States military is the greatest military in the history of the world because, our, because of its people. And our people are grounded on three specific tenets. The first is professional competency, the second is character, and the third is leadership. Professional competency. I would ask of each of you that every day that you wake up and you look at yourself in the mirror, that you commit to yourself that you will be the best at what you do in the world. With respect to character, never ever forget that your bumper sticker is that your integrity is non-negotiable. And lastly, with leadership, I believe that the crucible of leadership is really understanding people, covenant leadership, servant leadership, those that you serve, and that commitment between those that you serve and them to you. That's the most important, to understand your people. And so I'll just close with this. Be experts in tactics, be experts in technology, but most importantly, be experts in your people. Those midshipmen to be commissioned ensigns in the world's greatest Navy, Stan. <laughs> Having, please raise your right hands. Having been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy to rank from 26 May, 2023, do you solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that you take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully execute the duties of the office upon which you are about to enter? So help you God. I do! Ensigns, seats. Ladies and gentlemen, today we will graduate 1,018 men and women who have met the many challenges of four years at the Naval Academy. In addition to those you just saw commissioned into the Navy and Marine Corps, the class of 2023 also includes 11 graduates from 10 nations around the world. At this time, we invite these international graduating midshipmen to stand when their name is called along with members of their national delegation who are in attendance today. These graduates, whose national flags are flying above the memorial arches at the north end of the stadium, will return to their countries and serve with distinction in their armed forces or, other, or in other government service. From the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka, Gimrivri Kushmal Rikramathalaka. From the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, Zain Eljditawi. From the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Amar Asari. From the Kingdom of Thailand, Sirisak Bandasak. From Malaysia, Muhammad Anik Hilman bin Haslimi. From the Republic of Honduras, 
Diego Martinez Mena. From the Republic of Korea, Gon Hee Kim. From the Republic of Peru, Carlos Villalobos Mendoza. From Romania, Georgel Madeline Savin. From Romania, Iwana Cesara Vlad. And from Taiwan, Ho Yen Tu. Congratulations. Seats. Today's graduates join the more than 88,000 men and women who have graduated from the Naval Academy since its founding in 1845. As part of our graduation ceremony today, members of the Naval Academy class that preceded this year's graduates by 50 years will honor this continuing chain of Naval Academy graduates by presenting engraved ensign and second lieutenant uniform devices to the class of 2023. Several members of the class of 1973 are listed in your program and are here today to participate in this special recognition of Naval Academy graduates' contributions across the decades. Please join me in recognizing and applauding these distinguished graduates. Finally, before we begin introductions of individual graduates, I should remind you of an important Naval Academy tradition. The parents and friends of each graduate are invited to stand when that graduate's name is called. In that way, we can recognize your contribution to the achievement of these fine young men and women. The Secretary of Defense will now present diplomas to those individuals graduating with distinction. Those members of the class of 2023 graduating with distinction, please rise. Peter D. Hillen stands first in the class. Derek T. Guess. Graham M. Lindner. William T. Ash. Virendra V. Gatte. Peter H. Barrett. Catherine O. Meehan. Ryan M. Conway. Anastasia R. Lesho. Leon R. Dunlevy. Marguerite Irene M. Norman. Kara L. Nazuski. Anders J. Golbranson. Joshua B. Dubberly. Luke B. O'Hara. Stephen R. Scholl. Mary E. Almy. Sean G. Lee. Kyle R. Beasley. Aiden P. Larson. 
Carrie M. Hutchins II. Aditya S. Deshmukh. Kyle A. Faison. Benjamin D. Kwong. Stuart R. Feckhelm. Hampton W. D. Hurt the Fourth. Dylan Carroll. Michael W. Gertler. Joseph P. Kasurgis. Nathan C. Schatz. Joseph J. Osgar. Luke W. Turmoshusen. Peyton R. Smith. Matthew M. Skripzak. Stephen R. Stokes. Cannon V. Breen. Charles J. Doherty. Nelson C. Toriano, Jr. Faith K. Brooks. Paul F. Zimmer. Elizabeth R. Sullivan. John D. Thomas. Charlotte A. Ryan. Brooke A. Gothier. Kirk M. Liscombe. Kevin D. Bay. Jonathan E. Schroeder. James T. Rice. Nathan H. Dickman. Brendan L. Neal. Cade C. Trauger. Isabel A. Hossifross. Rachel E. Sanborn. Andrew F. Nixon. Chloe E. Coos. Alden S. Fitz. Eric J. Pryall. Landon M. Klaus. David C. Heizenga. Daniel J. Foner. Oliver T. Hassler. Brian A. Palacios Paz. Nathan D. Williams. Van M. Wireback. Jinhan Sun. Jacob P. Lowe. George L. Fish. Daniel S. Murray. Ryan G. Hoffman. Matthew E. Ross. John T. Babiak. Elizabeth A. Miller. Jack A. Santina. 
Veronica L. O'Connor. Peyton J. Johnson. Tanner W. Nixon. Zoe A. Howes. Joseph A. Deal. Nicholas J. Friedel. Sarah M. Blank. Margaret C. Foot. Daniel R. Ruggiero. Peter V. Rossi. Adam S. White. Jason K. Weiss. Dylan E. Blake. Brian C. Way. David K. Jin. Hunter J. Greenwood. Antonio M. Zacharia. Amelie O. Million. Eliza B. Herring. Taylor M. Ziegenfuss. Jackson S. Fuller. Amelia C. Oldham. Ashley H. Chung. Gregory B. Smith. Patrick J. Mahalik. Nicholas J. Shearer. Ross H. Massey. John W. Brand IV. Beth N. Miller. Cole T. Shank. The Secretary of Defense, the Secretary of the Navy, the Chief of Naval Operations, the Commandant of the Marine Corps, the Superintendent, and the Commandant of Midshipmen will now present diplomas to members of the graduating class individually by company. Odd-numbered companies will receive their diplomas from my left and even-numbered companies from my right. From the first company, Christian T. Bennett. From the second company, Casey R. Acola. Heather N. Born. Joshua T. Adams. Abigail L. Bravo. Ryan. R. Alexis. Dane P. Campbell. John A. Amell. Nicholas J. Campbell. Amar A. Asiri. Mora S. Dawson. Nathan W. Barr. Jeanette Fernandez. Jake K. Bosky. Michaela L. Fernandez Sanchez. Chase H. Brahaney. 
Adam S. Gorseth. Stephen R. Chiolino. Louis Emmanuel Guillory. Hunter L. Emanis. Henry A. Haig, Jr. John Luca C. Fresky. Donovan M. Hodem. Jackson P. Hathaway. Kelly E. Hughes. Garrett S. Hope. Sarah K. Y. Hunter. Griffin C. Johnson. Thomas M. Joyce. James A. Joyce. Caroline A. Leal. Lillian R. Kelly. Mateo E. Marinmera. Brandon T. Madison. Daniel L. Milliman. Garrett M. McAllister. Brandon P. Moore. Joseph D. Ostrowski. Yusuf A. Musa. Jackson T. Perry. Mary A. Rogers. David J. Reichert II. Mateo A. Simpson. Zachary E. T.A. Michaela D. Stangle. John R. Trombetta. Austin Cole Stover. Irene A. Tyler. Moses L. Tatioli. Alexandra L. Urban. Ashley J. Trotter. Joanne E. Van Gorder. Roger O. Vega. Jonathan T. Wharton. Benjamin A. Watson. Gimarivi K. Wickramathilica. Oliver C. Yang. Sarah K. Yo. From the third company, Andres E. Ballesteros. William L. Yes. Sarasak Bandasak. From the fourth company, Eric E. Alcorn. Isabella M. Bogucki. Jaden T. Alexander. Emerson C. Cahal. Keelan K. Allen. Aaron P. Carson. Esperanza M. Antonares. Marissa L. Casamates. Philip H. Arnold. Andrew R. T. Clevenger. Patrick E. Baker. Lydia E. Getz. Ian N. Bartlett. Jacob R. Haviland Olores. Ryan C. Bell. Michael J. Hitchings. Jordan J. Blair. Drew H. Koike. Ryan M. Bullock. Luke Lipaukin. Michael S. Cho. 
Carson E. Lopez. William M. Duffy. Lucas A. Madonna. Emily V. Ettrick. John M. Mariano. Andrew J. Faber. Jonathan F. Merced. Gracial L. Hinola. Christina A. Null. Ryan F. Keneally. Kenna Pierce, Jr. Grace Kraus. Morgan K. Prigmore. Chase N. LaRoche. Nicholas H. Rockwald. Colin A. McGillivray. Antonio F. Sanchez the Fourth. Adam J. McCowan. James E. Spertoli. Justice A. Mermerian. Michael A. Schaefer. Patrick C. Merce. Cameron R. Cher. Vanessa M. Ortiz. Charles P. Sewell. Connor B. Pellet. Andrew R. E. Smith. Taylor E. Pollock. Samuel Wyatt Smith. George L. M. Savine. Jacob Tyler. Marita R. Schmitz. Sarah E. Williams. Jack M. Stevenson. From the Fifth Company, James P. Corrigan. Mac J. Weiss. Hitoshi J. Cullinan. From the Sixth Company, Kyle F. Brancheski. Nicole G. Dupre. Joseph P. Brennan. Sophia M. Dobbs. John A. Campbell. Anna Marie Gilligan. Blake J. Carter. Blaze A. Hayden. Michael F. Castellanos. Benjamin R. Holland. Samantha A. Choi. Jed R. Isley. Catherine M. Corby. Charles B. Markulowitz. Bruce M. Dickinson. Masai J. Maynard. Jackson T. Dupe. Blake R. McConkey. Maxwell S. Feudo. Nathan H. McCool. Kyrus T. Fort. Ayana A. McLaughlin. Wesley T. Gaines. John E. McMahon. Diego P. Gebhardt. 
Timothy E. Meyer. Brandon C. Goddard. Chloe I. Miller Russo. Nathan R. Druselski. Charlene K. Murky. John N. Howler. John R. Mullen. Noah C. Holler. Riley G. Plossica. Skyler D. Johnston. Charles M. Plumley III. Grant M. Manock. Genesis A. Rapallo. Diego A. Martinez Mena. Cole L. Rebensbees. Lauren E. Moore. Taylor M. Robinson. Trayvon G. Poe. Lucas A. Schatz. Nathaniel P. Raider. Rose L. Tracy. Edward C. Randolph. Zoe Laura M. Velez. Druva M. Riss Wadker. William J. Wang. Alicia L. Sanchez. Andrew O. Weaver. Tate E. Thorn. Radford C. Wyrick. Sarah E. Topic. Justin Yu. Alexander L. Turner. From the Seventh Company, Julius W. Abley the Third. Alan T. Wong. Gina M. Barbera. Maria E. Weimer. Julian K. Barkles. Chris J. Whiteman. Samuel B. Chanow. Eve R. Warden. William W. Clark. From the 8th Company, Finn M. Anderson. Joseph L. Kloss. Carlin A. Blavelt. Phoebe R. Cooper. Kevin P. Borman. Joseph S. Emmer. Lily K. Brown. Tess Marie Hendrickson. Davon M. Carter. Kevin P. Heilman. Arthur D. Curry III. Carson Davis G. Hillier. Joseph R. Day. Jacob H. Jenkins. Christoph D. Descore. Caitlin R. Johns. Robert P. Frymuth. Alexander W. Kramer. Spencer H. Greaves. Samuel R. Creel.
Stephanie L. Jacobs. Henderson Y. Mark. Nathan S. Lee. Natalie J. Markov. Christopher W. Lay. Coleman C. Meadows. Molly J. Mangan. Christopher G. Medina. Jack P. Masterson. Amanda G. Morales. Michael F. Maui. John W. Maroney. Allison D. McGaw. Natalia S. Pavlik. Nathan J. Mitchell. Cole A. Roski. Madison A. Moores. Sarathi N. Shaw. Sawyer M. Neal. Sophie E. Shelbourne. Jan Kristen Lee L. Ocampo. Cameron L. Sheldon. Callie L. Ramey. Ethan J. Son. Russell J. Rusnell. Zachary N. White. Carolyn G. Shire. William Kenneth Wilkins. Gavin W. Seagraves. Nolan M. Wright. Jacob W. Smith. From the Ninth Company, Mark Edward Andres. Piper M. Spindle. Abigail M. Ball. Samuel V. Stolzer. J. A. Beatman. D. Vialva Lijo. Muhammad Ani Kilman bin Haslimi. Turner W. Wine. Brandon Robert Burt. Michael A. Wintercorn. Grant A. Booker. Joshua K. Wisgard. Emily H. Sharney. From the 10th Company, Mary Samuel Egwe Agube. Nicole Y. Choi. Amanda Marie Yoksim Dong Augustin. Justin Wonjay Chu. Seth Bale. Alexander R. Coleman. Isaiah C. Camacho. Ryan P. Connors. Peyton F. Campbell. James M. Crossfield. Eric R. Carey. Evan Patrick Dill. Ethan R. Cruz. Jonah Raymond Von Hat. Avril A. De Santiago. Clay Patrick Keller. Caitlin D. Duran. Aiden Cole Lambrecht. 
Jack R. Elliot. Catherine W. Livingston. Kyle E. Fairbanks. John E. McCarthy. Jonas Park Greer. Caitlin Delaney McKeown. Seth T. Henderson. Ryan David Mitchell. Adam M. Ibrahim. Michael Scott Nays. Nicholas M. Kang. Wei Hung Ing. Aiden J. Levy. Val Park. J. W. Lee. Felix Y. Park. Ava E. Lusby. Sahil K. Pasari. Eli O. Mayberry. Thomas S. Russell. James P. Morgan. Jackson S. Smith. Anna Elizabeth Olszewski. Dale L. Sturdivant II. Zach S. Palumbo. Michael P. Wakem. Annie U. Quo. Langley Rose Wooten. Richard Alexander Romano. Albert Way Shu. Connor H. Simpson. Joseph James Aladonis III. Hannah E. Sweeney. From the 11th Company, Roya Patricia Aliha. Wallace B. Tisdale. Jack C. Angelinas. Connor R. Van Lu. Alberto Distaric. Nadia C. Vasu. Mason J. Dowell. Kiefer M. Washburn. Jaden P. Fanning. From the 12th Company, Adenakachi Akuchi. Ryan A. Farbacher. Jordan O. Barnhart. Noah, you Faust. John A. Berardi. Larry and Frazier. Ashley C. Buley. Blake C. Halleck. Jack P. Brake. Alex E. Caitlin E. Burns. Mark A. Horton. Diego X. Campos. Brendan M. James. Ethan D. Chandler. Dakota L. James. Margaret E. Cleary. Michael E. Jeschke. Peyton T. Comstock. Ryan Keen. 
Paul D. Crane. Noah C. Knarr. Benjamin C. Curry. Megan S. Leiden. Robert R. Dean. Ting Shin Ma. Eleanor Lynn Dees. Michael A. Mahala. Michelle T. Eckhoff. Will McKay. Alexander A. Edling. Wyatt M. Morris. Benjamin C. Goodson. Aaron Mary Pierce. Sydney A. Hallsmith. Olivia K. Petty. Kevin S. Cabasco. Daniel J. Rizek. Andre F. LaPlante. Brianna M. Sangino. Jonathan R. Middlebrooks. Reed N. Schilb. Nicholas F. Musa. Samantha Marie Sinel. David A. Navarez Reza. Conrad C. Swenson. Dylan R. Pattison. Terry A. Tata. Annabelle A. Powers. Madison R. Urbana. Michael W. Pyle. Courtney T. Weir. Samantha C. Rando. From the 13th Company, Olivia M. Belcher. Owen P. Ray. Jake R. Carrillo. Eric P. Ryman. Colin B. Creighton. Alejandro J. Rentas Barrios. River W. Curtis. Trent K. Shiraki. Eleanor D. Dabney. Jonathan A. Simmons. Daniel T. Davies. Rebecca P. Vavasur. Lydia G. DePaolo. Christian L. Velez. Dawson M. Dorn. Ross S. Velez. Gina Freeman. Clifford T. Vuong. Julia A. Galbraith. Gavin R. West. Noah C. Garcia Galan. From the 14th Company, Benjamin H. Balzer II. John M. Hannon. James P. Cassidy. Nicholas P. Hilaire. Jack A. Cessary. Jacob K. Hoodenpile. Caden E. 
Daly. Colby Hawkins. Luke D. Davis. Cody E. Johnston. Catherine D. DeSauer. Paul E. Kinsella. Reese D. Early. Hanford and Lockwood. Valerie C. Guilfoy. John D. Marshall. Daniel I. Goddard. Jacob R. Martinez. Eleanor C. Gentert. Ryan K. Metz. Hannah M. Harwood. Caitlin R. Noctreeb. Andrew J. Hernandez. John M. Nelligan. Colin M. Hippler. Andrew K. Pierce. Jeffrey D. Homan. Mark H. Postma. Elizabeth C. Jennings. James W. Schumacher. Katerina I. Katsarov. Nabil Tapji Shah. Oleksiy Andreovich Lakay. Olivia T. Shapiro. Aiden P. Longley. Braxton J. Tracy. Jacob R. Meyer. Nels J. Waranimi. Zachary J. Plachik. Johnny Walker. Wade P. Quigley. Drew M. Williams. Millen P. Randall. From the 15th Company, Joseph S. Altmeyer. Blake P. Rowland. Joshua A. Bowman. Henry H. Shearer. George B. Burke. Harold W. Slaughter. Nyla I. Chambers. Nia A. Silver. Riley B. Cushing. From the 16th Company, Robert W. Archambault. Olivia B. Foster. Cameron E. Bond. Giovanni G. Gambatese, John F. Bodenman, Ryan S. Grafman, Anna C. Buzzard, Lily E. Hurst, Brian W. Calabrese, Blake T. Reagan M. Johnson.
17th Company, Vincent P. Abrams. Logan B. Schultz. Elizabeth C. Arnold. Benjamin W. Selnick. Max L. Benedetti. Patrick R. Skolniak. Jasmine L. Brown. Sabrina M. Sutter. Joy A. Brown Bryant. Joshua A. Valdez. Nicholas A. Birch. Jennifer R. Van Buren. Nathaniel H. Cash. Christian A. Williams. Lane R. Condi. Stephen M. Williams. Jake E. Casavella. From the 18th Company, Lara A. Alberto. Blake F. Doherty. James C. Anglin. Casey F. Feinstein. Connor F. Bradwish. Karsten R. Francis. Constantine D. Campbell. Jameson D. Hamshow. Madeline G. Cashin. Jacob R. Healy. Brandon J. Cummins. Christian C. Hutchinson. Jack E. Dennehy. Paul I. Keeler. Nicole E. Diario. Eric D.J. Lee. Brian P. Flaherty. Alyssa M. Nagel. Andrew J. Javier Bennett. Thomas E. Pearson. Thomas S. Jacum. Jessica M. Riggs. Andrea C. Marrero Massa. Nicholas G. Rowan. Andrew C. McCorrison. Abisa W. Sambo. Declan P. Murphy. Zachary K. Shea. Matthew C. Newton. Alexander J. Smith. Woodrow B. Orris. Lucas N. Starks. Alexander K. Reitzkram. Haley S. Strumoski. Daniel E. Rowe. Mark E. Suminski. Jason Santiago. Ayana Chazara Vlad. Rob Saunders. Antonius R. Wells. Nathaniel A. Schreiner. Matthew T. Whalen. Trent C. Smoyer. Tyler G. Zancanella. Jack K. Tabor. From the 19th Company, Fiordia Y. Actor. Vince R. Tenebro. Nathan J. Allison. Francis J. Thomas. Baines C. Autry. Emily Tomaherald. John B. 
Benton. Anton C. Wegg. Gabrielle E. Berger. Dawson M. Wise. Tessa R. Thone. Mackenzie A. Williams. Andrew K. Brophy. Grant W. Wilson. Elijah N. Carter. From the 20th Company, Zion A. Armstrong. Samantha J. Chapman. Lillian C. Baumgartner. Daniel C. Deaver. Winter F. Bose. Joshua L. De La Rosa. Mary E. Brackett. Samuel J. Dracobli. Hans Ezekiel H. Cabrera. Evan J. Englert. Garrison T. Clark. Anna J. Hahn. Travis W. Delgado. Victoria L. Janella. Aiden C. Ellsworth. Sophia Y. Kim. Peter A. Fenton. Samuel J. Kwiatkowski. Valerie L. Holen. James W. Lee. Jordan D. Hummel. Mason B. McKenzie. David Jimenez. Colby J. McGill. Zachary A. Kelt. Gavin. M. McJones. Joseph M. Kennedy. Luke S. Noah. Sean G. Kulig. Trevor T. Peitzman. Jason J. Kwong. Lauren Power. Michael R. Leswell. Jacob V. Rabaja. Kayla E. Malone. Peter J. Retnaika. Sean Douglas A. McDonough. Emma D. Shattuck. Luke T. Martin. Ethan R. Wagner. Fiona G. Mulligan. Riley J. Welch. John C. Pelletier. Emma M. Westerholm. Malcolm D. Rivers. George A. Williams. Samuel P. Russell. From the 21st Company, Saharsh Maxi. Victoria S. Sanchez. Brett R. Belknap. Max F. Schlein. Gerard S. Burnsens. Loretta L. Strickland. Tyler J. Beauclair. Paul M. Warner. Tyler E. Casey. Eli M. Williams. Benjamin J. Chi. From the 22nd Company, William Jackson Bryant. Austin A. Cusimano. Athena Karun. 
Imani M. Edmonds. Kayla N. Crownen. Stephen M. Florence. Abram W. Dyrex. Jasmine A. Forbes. Patrick L. Dorsey. Carrie P. Franklin Jr. Justin T. Diger. Oriana A. Howard. Rex J. Fukuda. Justin D. Irwin. Douglas S. Gologorski. Riley P. Jamison. Andrew P. Graham. Carter S. Johnson. Louis P. Gray. Dolly D. Johnson. John Russell Hagerman. Toby J. Kim. Jason A. Hines. Joshua C. McGill. Nathaniel J. Hammond. Catherine L. Mendick. Connor E. Jacobson. David W. Moore. Jason E. Keaton. Michael B. Nichols. Enzo S. Kim. Andrew J. Pierre. Hannah E. Klein. Aaron M. Rodriguez. Gabriella R. Levin. Jackson L. Schultz. Leandro M. Ma. Christian D. Thompson. Sadie A. McKellen. Hoyen Tu. Baldomero Mendez. Christopher G. Vasquez. Samuel A. Morris. Macy B. Winter. Carter A. Mulligan. From the 23rd Company, William C. Anderson. Joe Phelan. Dylan T. Black. Everett J. Pierce. Ryan M. Kraft. Christian J. Pompelli. Lucas D.R. DeLaturo. Mason M. Rahimi. Johnny A. DiVagillo. Mitchell D. Rome. Peyton E. Douglas. Evan M. Schlifestein. Zane Y. Elzdetawi. Marion G. Schrader. Nathaniel J. Erickson. Zachary R. Small. Ty C. Fusile. Calvin Tran. Gordon S. Guest. Connor A. Wilson. Rory K. Haggerty. From the 24th Company, Lucas Paul Blay. Jason W. Hamill. Robert J. Boyero. Griffin R. Heisinga. Henry L. Kahn. Dara L. Holstein. James P. Flannery. 
Jason D. Kaiser Jr. Christiana D. Foster. Timothy D. Maciejewski Jr. Margaret R. Folks. Nathan R. McDougall. Ansley W. Gabrielle. Abigail R. Pigeon. Benjamin E. Gormley. Jonathan T. Pitts. Natalie A. Graham. Andrew X. Pouchong Long. Edward J. Grabois III. William H. Rents. John B. Hafner. Andrew N. Romero. Tanner S. Helmick. Gabriel Rosa. Amy C. Kim. Rihanna O. Smith. Andrew W. Lee. Colin R. Smith. Lauren A. Makeoff. Faith E. Southwick. Matthew E. McMain. Peter K. Tarala. Enzo E. Moreno. Mariah Y. Vogler. Grant L. Nichols. Seth I. White. Eduardo Paz. From the 25th Company, Sean M. Bateman. Daniel Marco Pezzini. Lance R. Kegel. Max J. Plum. Mavy L. Debus. Joseph D. Press. Aaron J. Dunn. Jackson S. Rod. Charlie B. Dunn. Andrew M. Rystetter. Tyler S. Dunnigan. Jacoby D. Rice. Yandina Y. Giles. Zane L. Richardson. Jonathan E. Greenberg. Marcos S. Salazar. Riley A. Guerrero. Emmy I. Soldwedell. Michael A. Henriquez. Bradley N. Vargas. Sethan. E. Oye. Samuel L. Barbarell. Adrian J. Johnson. Aiden A. Waits. Hannah L. Ladd. Anders L. Wulo Journey. Braxton C. Leaper. From the 26th Company, Jerome T. Adams. Bridget L. Loger. Julia J. Bianchi. Scott V. Lombardi. Jonathan M. Berkmeyer. Andrew B. Matthews. Christopher L. Barnum. Patrick T. McDonald. 
Jace R. Branson. Aiden P. McNally. Crawford B. Enyard. Jack C. Metcalf. Finn N. Garner. Margaret K. Moore. Paula A. Hackbar. Riley D. Nofziger. John C. Hutchins, Jr. Lucas F. Padilla. Molly M. Jones. Philip D. Roach, Jr. Sean K. Culey. James L. Romo. Michael D. Kriegris. Megan L. Rumba. Kyle W. Cutney. Daniel Q. Shin. Randy C. Kwa. Wyatt B. Smith. Joshua B. Leggett. Jillian L. Taggart. Jane M. Melafronte. Lynn N. Tang. James Patrick S. Marquez. Carlos A. Villalobos. Kenna R. Mayer. John C. Polinski. Tyler C. Nelson. John D. Wagner, Jr. Mark A. Ostrowski. Eli Walls. William C. Pennington, third. Benjamin A. Worthy. Jeffrey C. Peters. From the 27th Company, Annika R. Brady. Thomas Patrick Ryan III. Tanner M. Buford. Nilda V. Sanchez Gonzalez. Brian E. Case. Agatha M. Schaefer. Angelina K. Chan. Christopher J. Smith. Jonah S. Clark. Alton J. Stardefin, Jr. Dominic A. Cole. Kyle Tang. Dylan R. Coonley. Joseph C. Wadley. Zeta B. Fredericks. Neil W. Wilkerson. Ricardo D. Herzog Balderez. Nataline Ziola. Colton J. Higgins. From the 28th Company, Jacob G. Adams. Jennifer A. James. Daniel D. Chang. Elena M. Julius. Molly K. Chapman. Evan D. Casalonis. Jonathan J. Chen. Melissa J. Linzel. Sean Chi. Jaden R. Parker. Nicholas E. Campy. Guillermo F. Pasrobles. 
John C. Colbert. Joseph P. Petty. Samantha J. Druin. Kyle J. Roush. Daniel J. Eglie. Nathan M. Rhodesant. Joseph E. Garcia. Logan R. Rowe. Eloise A. Giebert. Jeremy G. Stevens. Selleck W. Hopper. Connor M. Steibolt. Donovan T. Jones. Nicholas F. Straw. Robert C. Knight. Tayo A. Tatara. Zachary A. Kuhlman. Jacob T. Williams. Elizabeth K. Linsdale. Sean M. Yoder. Lindsay M. Llewellyn. And from the 29th Company, Maggie L. O. Miller. Giovanni P. Macaluso. Faith A. Bonilla. Julia M. Matthias. Tiernan S. Bruner. Paul K. Montalvo. Casey M. Carson. Samuel A. Nafis. Lance W. Christopher. Matthew M. Nichol. Eloisa A. Chubb. Isabella Ray S. Olaz. Caitlin J. Dayton. Aiden J. Otero. Dylan M. Garrett. Simon H. Peterson. Phoebe T. Heller. Ernest B. Sun. Robert L. Hare. Victoriano J. Trevino. Alexandra R. Harrison. Jonathan W. Tully. Caden J. Hopkins. Zachary R. Bandel. Lincoln S. Jones. Mark A. Vaughn. Andrew King. Riley C. Wilson. Alexander K. Q. From the 30th Company, Madison E. Applewhite, Jake A. Kiggins, Zachary K. Bell, Jessica M. LaPlante, Jared A. Bloy, Charles C. Morla Champton. Jack T. Burke. Michael R. Kispe. Brianna M. Chiodini. Connor Q. Rex. Connor W. Davidson. Jordan K. 
Richard. Joseph M. Dominguez. Nicholas D. Riker. Christopher K. Eguchi. Grace Bowman Shaughnessy. Spencer D. Eves. Jack E. Sherman. Jackson A. Flanagan. Zachary M. Snyder. Christopher M. Hom. John L. Suter II. Benjamin R. Jones. Matthew A. Thibodeau. Trevor J. Kelly. Grace E. Toll. Gunhe Kim. Dawson J. Wagi. Rachel Marie E. Lariba. Kirsta E. Wheelock. Tian Matisse. Allison E. McGinnis. William C. Meganson. Robert W. Moore. Dylan. Cynthia D. Pitts. Tyler M. Perifio. Keegan H. Shreves. Foster C. Stacy. Kiana R. Washington. Blake Matthew Weaver. I now introduce Second Lieutenant Grant Booker, United States Marine Corps, President of the Class of 2023. Assembled in front of this stage are 1,018 members of the proud class of 2023. But I know that we all wish that number was 1,019. That one missing is our brother and friend, Taylor Connors. As you know, Taylor passed last summer. Rather than a moment of silence, I feel it is appropriate to acknowledge Taylor with a round of applause on this day to celebrate his life and to show our appreciation for his example as a friend and as a leader.
Thank you. Good afternoon, Secretary Austin, Secretary Del Toro, General Berger, Admiral Gilday, Vice Admiral Buck, distinguished guests, friends, family, the class of 1973, and most importantly, to the esteemed class of 2023. Thank you for joining us on this momentous occasion on which today marks the culmination of 1,429 days of discipline, hard work, and a whole lot of grit. And it took every person in this stadium this afternoon to reach us this, to reach this moment. The members of the class of 2023, thank you all. Secretary Austin, if you will please join me at the podium, sir. On behalf of the class of 2023, I would like to present you with this gift. We thank you for your words today, and I'm certain their impact on us will be evident as we enter into our new careers as ensigns and second lieutenants. Thank you, sir. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge three notable people, our honorary classmates. These individuals were nominated and voted on by our class earlier this semester. Their contributions to our country, Navy and Marine Corps, the Naval Academy, or to our class specifically, have been nothing short of outstanding. For their hard work and dedication, we would like to recognize them as honorary members of the class of 2023. Honorees, if you would please stand when your name is called so that we may recognize you and your achievements. Our first honorary classmate is Petty Officer First Class Marcus Luttrell, who was awarded the Navy Cross for extraordinary heroism in actions against the enemy while serving in a four-man special reconnaissance element with SEAL Delivery Vehicle Team 1, Naval Special Warfare Task Unit, Afghanistan in June 2005. The mission, known as Operation Red Wings, became one of the most widely known stories of resilience and courage after the release of the blockbuster movie Lone Survivor. During COVID, he spoke with us via virtual lectures known as Late Nights with Loose Hall and was a source of inspiration for the class of 2023 during some of our most trying and difficult times. Our second honorary classmate is Master Chief Britt Slabinski, a Navy SEAL who was awarded the Medal of Honor for his heroic actions during Operation Anaconda in 2002. He led a reconnaissance team to its assigned area atop Takur Gar, a 10,000-foot snow-covered mountain in Afghanistan, to rescue teammate Petty Officer First Class Neil Roberts. He also participated in the highly publicized rescue mission to recover Army Private First Class Jessica Lynch. During our time here, Master Chief Slubinski notably dedicated his time to mentoring midshipmen and played an instrumental role in the development of the midshipmen ethos this past spring, which is proudly a part of the legacy that the class of 2023 leaves behind. Our third honorary classmate, who I'm, I know needs no introduction to you all, is Mrs. Joanne Buck. Mrs. Buck arrived here with us in the summer of 2019, and throughout her time here, she has enthusiastically supported our class alongside her husband, Vice Admiral Buck. She has been there for all of our big moments, from attending our musical and theatrical performances to being on the sideline at our away games. She's hosted hundreds of events over the last four years to include the creation of the first class company receptions that we all came to love so much. This new tradition will leave a lasting legacy on the Naval Academy, and we are so grateful that we got to be a part of it. Sir, I think that people might look at you a little sideways when you say that you married a member of the class of 2023, but once you explain a little bit more, I think they'll understand and they'll see really just how much this means. <laughs> To all of our honorary classmates, thank you for your contributions and congratulations on your selection as members of our fine, fine class. To Captain Stewart, Mr. Moses, and the class of 1973, your unwavering support of our class throughout our time here has been greatly appreciated. Gentlemen, we thank you all.
To Mac Daniels and the class of 2024, you got the juice now. Our time as leaders of the brigade has passed and you are now in the driver's seat. Be ready. I know it's about 97 degrees out here, so I'm gonna try to get everybody out of the sun. Uh, and I'm gonna get to the end of my remarks here, I promise. As I'm sure many of you are aware, Naval Academy graduates have a certain reputation about us. Naval Academy leaders can be easily identified by the way we carry ourselves, by the way we treat others, by the way in which we lead. My grandfather, being an enlisted infantryman in Vietnam, was the first person to inform me of this reputation. He told me that Naval Academy graduates were among the most qualified, capable, and outstanding leaders that he had the pleasure of serving with in the Corps. According to Sergeant Claude Booker, their leadership stood out from the rest, from second lieutenants all the way up to generals. He knew what we've all been shown here. The Naval Academy produces high quality leaders, a distinction that we all now hold. Grandpa Claude passed just before Christmas in 2020, so sadly he isn't here with us today. We should all strive to be the leaders that he and Marines like him expected us to be. In order to do that, we have to love those we lead and we have to love those that we serve alongside. Some of y'all might have heard this before and that's great if you have and some of y'all might not have and that's all right too. But there was a man named Paul who wrote a letter a few years back and this is what he said to his friends about love. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. This is how we should lead, with patience, with kindness, without envy or boastfulness or pride, but most importantly, with love. Y'all know what? I think we're in really good shape. We've lived together for four years now. We know how we operate. We all know what we've been through. So many have helped me through and an equal number, no doubt, have helped you all along as well. We should be so grateful for this mutual support. With all this in mind, I have one request of you, my classmates. Prove the nation right. Be the leaders you were called to be. Be the leaders that the country thinks that you are. Be the leaders that my grandfather would have expected you to be. Be the leaders that Taylor was. Continue to be the leaders that I know you all are. As I close, I'll leave you with the words my father always said to me and my brother every night when we were growing up just before we went to bed, because I think they're fitting for a moment such as this. Class of 2023, I love y'all, I'm proud of y'all, and y'all are so special. Though we're departing from one another today, we are going to continue to be great together. Let's get after it. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as we come to the end of today's ceremony, please rise for the singing of Navy Blue and Gold. Please be seated.
I now introduce the president of the class of 2024, Midshipman Mac Daniels. Members of the classes of 2024, 2025, and 2026, please rise. I propose three cheers for those who are about to leave us. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Please be seated. Class of 23, I need you to get on your feet right now and get ready to make some noise. I propose three cheers for those we leave behind. Hip, hip. 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 Hip,